Hey, welcome to Ease Into Imperfect Eating, where dieting is dumb, moderation is key, and learning to eat some pizza without eating all the pizza has taken the place of the all or nothing mindset. I am your host, Jacqueline. Let's get started with today. It is a meals question, and it's really, really popular. It might rifle some feathers, um, but this is, you know, Jacqueline, I started uh, intuitive eating. I've quit dieting. I'm doing intuitive eating, or I've read the intuitive eating book, or I've seen intuitive eating posts on Instagram but I still feel really gross from food. Like I'm allowing myself, I'm giving myself permission and I feel really gross with food. And I'm thinking about going back to something restrictive to fix things. If this is you, I want you to know that you are not alone and we're going to get into it today. So uh, it's going to rifle some feathers. (laughs) Imperfect eating is not intuitive eating. Imperfect eating is intentional eating. Imperfect eating Um, is what I taught myself how to do after breaking up with dieting. Broke up with Whole30, uh, was like, cool, let's have pizza in the house. Having some pizza turned into eating all of the pizza and feeling gross. And I was like, cool, I need some structure uh, when it comes to to eating. I can't just say all food is allowed. You have permission to eat everything because what happened when I did that was I ate everything and felt gross. So when I talk about imperfect eating, it does draw on some of my experience as a teacher in that there is structure. It's intentional. Um, when we have structure, we feel safe. When we know what it is that we're supposed to be doing and we have some structure, some rules in place, we know what we're supposed to be doing. We can go and do the thing, right? When I was a teacher and I had kids come into the classroom, there were definitely uh, times in the beginning of my career where I was like, whatever, you know, like do whatever. Kids should be free. Kids should just get to play all day. And here's what would happen. The kids would run them up. The classroom was a mess. We would not get any teaching and learning done. That was not helpful. There were also years in my career as a teacher where I was like, it's my way or the highway. Sit down. We're getting to work. And you know what would happen with that? they would rebel. There was way, just like too much structure. And I was really mean. I was very punitive. There was just way too much. And the kids hated me. They hated school. They hated teaching and learning and they rebelled. It wasn't, I didn't get the output that I wanted. So when uh, I was successful as a teacher when it, is when I had a no nonsense nurturer teaching style. I was like, cool, no nonsense. This is the structure. I'm going to teach you the structure. I'm going to make sure that you know the, the, the classroom expectations, the rules, why we have these in place. I'm going to make sure that you know why we're doing this, but I'm also a nurturer. I'm going to make sure that you're enjoying the classroom and you're building relationships and you're enjoying life. Oh my gosh, enjoying life, right? So we need to have some structure, but we also need to have that emotional connection, that those things that make us happy. And it's not just Um, all work and no play. Okay. So if we think about that, uh, all work and no play is no fun. All play and no work is not fun. And we apply that to how we're eating. We're going to see that we want some structure, but we want to be able to have fun. Okay. Let's get in. So here's what you need to do. You need to remind yourself that no one is coming to save you. There's no diet out there. There's no book out there that is going to uh, tell you exactly what to do. You know what you need to do. Like it's not hard. Eat vegetables. That's not hard, right? It's making the choice to do that and knowing that you're doing these things because you're trying to help yourself. So this no nonsense nurturer approach. So when it is time to build a plate, you know what you need to do. You've already taught yourself the expectations. Expectations. You've already taught yourself the procedure. So the first thing that I want you to do is make it personal to yourself. You see my plates, but I want you to decide what foods actually make you feel your best. What foods energize you? If food is made up of calories and calories are units of energy, when we eat food, we are energizing our bodies. What foods, when you eat them, do you feel most energized? You don't have that 2 p.m. Uh, slump right after lunch where you have to go and rush and get caffeine or sugar, but your energy pretty much stays pretty even the whole day. Um, you also feel really good. Like you don't feel bloated and like weighed down and heavy. You feel actually good from these foods. Make a list. What are those foods uh, that make you feel your best? Then the next part. Name the foods that, you know, you'd be really sad. If you never got to eat these foods again, you would be really sad. You have an emotional connection to these foods, and that's okay. You're allowed to 
enjoy, joy, joy is an emotion. You are allowed to enjoy food. You are allowed to feel happy about wanting to eat a cookie or wanting to eat some pizza or participate in a pasta night with your family. You are allowed to want to have those. What foods would you be really sad that maybe there's not a ton of nutritional value, but there's the emotional connection to those foods. What are those foods, right? And then the third part, when you build a plate, it comes time to building a plate, okay? It's dinner time, or maybe uh, someone has ordered food, or you're at a potluck, you're at your family's house, um, it's, there's a meeting and there's food. What are the foods that you need to help yourself, you need to be that hero on your journey, help yourself and do those things, make the choice to pick those foods to put on your plate, right? So we have that structure. Um, I always remind people that I am not your diet guru. I am not the person that is going to fix your life. You are the person that has to hear information from other people and then make the decision, here's how I'm going to apply it into my life so that I can be the hero of my journey and other these other people are mentors or they're guides, right? So you are building a plate. You're picking the foods that make you feel your best because you know that your life is important, your body is important, your energy is important, and what you do during your day. Those things are important. So you're picking those foods, and then you're like, cool, there's pizza or there's chocolate or there's you know cookies, whatever. What is the decision that you're going to make to help yourself feel your best, right? It's probably not having a billion bags of chocolate. It's probably not. It's not going to help you feel your best. And so when I created Imperfect Eating, it, um, it really was about learning to have some pizza without eating all the pizza. And what I found was when I filled my plate up with mostly plants and mostly protein, I didn't have these strong cravings uh, for all of these sugary or oily or salty foods. When I made sure that I had enough plants and protein and plenty of water, my body felt energized. I felt good. Still have that emotional connection to pizza. And I'm okay with that. Now, how can I practice having some of that pizza, put some of it on my plate, make sure I have some water, plenty of water, and like sit down and enjoy this meal. If I'm going to eat pizza, I want to make sure that I'm enjoying it, right? So reminder, you have to set up structure for yourself that's going to work for yourself. It can be flexible. Um, maybe not every single meal is going to look like this, but most meals are going to look like this so that you feel good. And when you travel, you know how to build a plate. You know how to energize your body. Um, the, the structure doesn't really change. It's flexible. Um, it kind of works everywhere you go. If you cannot make your way of eating work everywhere you go, it's not going to last. Uh, you're never going to have a month where you have 30 days where you're not doing something or you don't have a holiday. You're, there's so, going to be something that pops up. But it's like, cool, what can I do for myself that's pretty simple every day to make myself feel good? And coming from that no-nonsense nurturer uh, approach. Um, we're doing these things to help ourselves. Without this structure, we feel gross. The structure is actually helping us and not being punitive. All right. I cannot wait to hear what you decide to put on your plate. Send me a message or comments below. Take care.